subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Hello and welcome to Health Live at Seniors Today. We are delighted to have here with us Dr. Nilayan Shah, who is uh, a consultant in the orthopedics department at the Sir H N Reliance Foundation Hospital and Research Center. A little about himself: after completing his MBBS from the Topiwala National Medical College, which is known as TNMC, he's he secured the D D Ortho with the second rank. He also uh, earned the MS Ortho in Mumbai with a gold medal and MCH Ortho from the UK. So those of you who go to him obviously know that they are in safe hands. Dr. Shah is a consultant orthopedic and knee replacement surgeon attached to various hospitals in Mumbai. He's involved in performing over 100 uh, knee replacements, which is TKR, a year in Mumbai, along with a group of four fellow surgeons. He worked as a clinical and research knee fellow at Bristol in England for a period of 18 months, and this helped him gain hands-on experience in all aspects of knee surgery. He also worked as orthopedic registrar at various hospitals across the UK uh, on rotation. He has pioneered the subvastus approach in knee replacement surgeries that is only minimally invasive. He has garnered a critical acclaim for this approach and often performs live surgeries in various conferences across India. He's a reviewer of the Indian Journal of Orthopedics and the British Journal of Bone and Joint, or Bone and Joint Surgery. Uh, Dr. Shah was also involved in clinical research and reviewed multiple research projects during his appointment in the UK. He's presented a series of uh, 300 knees operated through the mini subvestus technique at uh, a conference in 2007 and conducted a seminar on knee anthroplasty at uh, the Wairoch 2008. He's held faculty positions in several national and international conferences, including an AIMS up update on anthroplasty in 2014. We are delighted to have here with us, Dr. Shah. Dr. Shah is going to be talking about knee replacement myths and how new techniques have helped in improving quality of life for seniors, how they can help. Welcome to Seniors Today uh, and the Health Live uh, uh, series. Dr. Shah, how have you been? Thank you very much, Pradyumna, for those kind words. Uh, just a few corrections. Arthroplasty, not anthroplasty. Gosh, uh, uh, I'm not a doctor, so I, you know, but these things shouldn't happen. <laughs> and uh, probably the introduction is, is not really current for me. I would be doing now around 100 knee replacements a month, not a year. Oh. Uh, 100 I mean, knee replacements a, 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 a month. month. So is it India a country of weak knee people? No, India has a lot of people. And, uh, and in a way, we are kind of victims of our own success. Right. If I uh, elaborate, the longevity is increasing. Now the seniors, we were just talking, if you look at 60 plus, and if people are going to live till 85, 90 easily, then the longevity is there and uh, degenerative conditions are on the rise. Doctor, before I before I request you to make your presentation, I just you know just a broad ballpark statistic as to how many seniors out of one out of or out of ten seniors, how many would have a, a, a degenerative knee? I've got that in my slides. Yeah. Okay. Over to over to you, doctor. And how how are things on the on the COVID front and you know the various other uh, 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 you know things that keep seem to affect uh, us all. Uh, humankind? I think COVID, we got to protect ourselves, but seems to be a much lesser of a beast, at least in our part of the world, India. Uh, but it is still there, probably in China and Europe still. And uh, because of the vaccination or whatever, our innate immunity, we seem to be pretty protected. At least I am not seeing COVID as much in my patients as I used to, because we still test for COVID but it is very rarely that somebody comes positive now. Great. That's, that's, that's heartening news, given the fact that, you know, what all of us uh, went through, and especially people like yourself who are on the front line. You know, right. Because exactly. uh, you, you have to, you know, uh, uh, your call of the hour is to uh, look at uh, patients, and, you know, some of them could well have been infected. Right. So, um, 
Over to you, doctor, for uh, your uh, presentation. As we said, knee replacement myths and how new techniques helped in uh, have it helped in improving the quality of life of seniors. Over right. to you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. So if I may just share my screen. Yes, please. So those of you who have questions before Dr. Shah starts, those of you who have questions, please put them in the Q&A tab uh, uh, on, on, on this Zoom platform. Uh, as always, mention your age and your gender uh, so that Dr. Shah could give a more considered reply. But um, uh, we will take the questions and answers later after his presentation is over. Over to you, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank the HN Reliance Foundation Hospital for giving me this opportunity. And I would thank you, but in particular, Pradyumna, for having me here, for listening to my thoughts about knee replacements, myths, truths, and technology. The other thing I would say is that a lot of these things, although are uniformly believed, there may be some kind of individual differences and different surgeons may have different views. Now, <clears throat> when we are talking about knee replacements, we all know that it is for arthritis. Now, what is arthritis? Arthritis basically is an affection of the joint where mainly the cartilage, which is a soft structure, which is covering the bone, gets eroded. So here I have shown a photograph of a knee replacement and you can see this cartilage is eroded. What is important to note is that cartilage is not really seen on the x-rays. So if we see a few knee x-rays, the one to your uh, left shows a normal x-ray. Here there is early narrowing of the medial joint, which we would say is early arthritis. Here this is established arthritis that the narrowing is complete and the space between the other side of the joint has increased. And then this is advanced arthritis. I hope everybody can see it clearly how knee joint degenerates over time. So if you look at people above the age of 55 and here probably everybody is above 60 and even I am reaching that age, the incidence is 11% for men and 14% for women. It increases 2% per year. And if you are obese, that means the BMI is higher or if there have been injuries, then the incidence of arthritis is higher. Female ratio, it seems to be more common in women and the prevalence in 50 to 59 uh, age group is around 15%, increasing to 20% in the 60 to 69 group. 25% or 35% when you cross the age of 80. So this is a degenerative condition and it does increase with age. Then obviously there will be non-surgical management, exercises, weight reduction, physiotherapy, calcium, vitamin D, nutraceuticals, glucosamine, chondritin, that, those type of drugs. Paracetamol can be a drug of good choice non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can be used safely. And one can give injections, steroid injections, hyaluronan, uh, platelet-rich plasma or stem cell. Here I would like to point out that the greatest evidence that the injections work are for steroid injections. In America, the other injections are not even used. Whereas in Europe, HA injections are used, but PRP and stem cell, although people have started using it in our country, is more experimental. And as yet, there is no firm evidence that it is useful. An arthroscopy may be done if there are mechanical symptoms. By that, I mean that if the knee is locking, if there is a loose body between the bony surfaces, arthroscopy can help. In a young person where the alignment, an older patient with established arthritis, some kind of replacement, whether partial or total, will be required. Arthroscopy, as I said, is a very, very limited role. In osteotomy, we realign the bent bones so that weight distribution is symmetrical and it works well in younger patients. 
a partial knee replacement or a uni preserves the ligaments and the other parts of the knee so that the knee can be higher but the non replaced parts can fail but in selected patients that can last as long as a total knee replacement i was involved in a randomized trial uh, when i was working in england this is way back in 1996 and we found that at 5 years partial knee replacements did better than total knee replacement and this was published in a very very prestigious journal of bone and joint surgery and here you can see my name with some doyens of knee replacement surgery so this is what a partial knee looks like where we have only replaced a part of the knee and the other part of the knee remains intact another example so obviously you can do and the knee has a very very limited deformity so what are the advances in partial knee replacement selection of the patient the technique the robotics and materials all have advanced but obviously when the disease is more called as a total knee replacement and this has been a humongous success all over the world and also in india so the aim is to correct the deformity you restore proper limb alignment by aligning the components properly achieve proper balance so that the knee remains stable throughout the range of movement you secure the components such that they remain secured for years and decades together probably lifelong so that there is excellent longevity and classically all this was done through what is known as an extensile approach that means there is a very very vigorous approach which you would take to do this uh, surgery now despite the success if you ask somebody whether he wants to get a knee replacement done most people would answer no because they would say it is too painful too long a recovery too costly what if it fails they say i will need an icu stay they say i will need three units of blood so i don't want to get this done now the new scenario that i see in at least in my patients are, are that patients are demanding surgery so it is up to me that i operate only on the indicated patients a lot of patients with neurological problems spinal problems patients with uh poor blood flow in their limbs they also want to get knee replacement done so i have to diligently check that the surgery is suited for them so this is what i would say is reverse counseling i have to counsel them not to have the surgery done because they are demanding surgery so what has changed what are the lessons that we have learned we have learned that perioperative pain management is very important surgical technique obviously is important post op management is important and we as doctors should not be treating patients as some aliens we need to have proper doctor patient relationship in a friendly manner perioperative pain management is critical and i believe it is the surgeon's responsibility and it can make or break the success of the surgery what you require is a safe pain control without having nausea or vomiting and there should not be in delay in mobilization we give preemptive analgesia that means before the painful stimulus is even started analgesics painkillers have to be in the patient's body i like nerve blocks but we avoid opioids opioid jane nashe wala sab ha we avoid those so that the patients are uh, bright and cheerful so this is the patient's thigh i am using a nerve stimulator to find the main nerve the femoral nerve of the patient's leg you can see the twitching of the leg muscles so i can isolate that nerve with the help of a nerve stimulator and then with this medicine i have numbed the nerve and then i can put in a small catheter there and medicines can be given through that catheter so that the patient doesn't really feel any pain 
So femoral nerve blocks can work really well for hypotension and mobilization as these are my earlier uh, kind of mobilization is was typically on the second, third day post-surgery. I would still use femoral nerve block if I cannot use adductor canal blocks, which I have started using since the year 2013. Here, the nerve is blocked. Again, you see the patient's leg. In femoral nerve block, we used to give the injection near the groin. This is given near the mid thigh. So here, the nerve is blocked after most of the, what we call the motor branches, the branches to the muscles have already been given. So there is no weakness and patients can walk within a few hours. So according to me, this has been a game changer. But you need an ultrasound guided adductor canal block in the theater. I was so impressed by this that we did trial of femoral nerve block and adductor canal block. And this has been published in the Journal of Arthroplasty, which is the most prestigious journal about knee replacement, hip replacement in the world. And we found that adductor canal block is better for earlier recovery. We did another study and said that continuous adductor canal block is better than a single shot block. So the biggest hurdle of the patient, pain in the perioperative period, seems to be settled. Surgically, we used to utilize parapatellar extensile approach and some people still utilize this. Here, this is a diagrammatic representation of all our knees. The knife is cutting along the muscles here and you can see that all the structures which are next to the patella are cut. So the medial stabilizers of the patella are cut. They are obviously resutured, but it can cause some tilt. And this is what the knee looks like from inside. And the incision length, this is actually a knee operated by late Dr. Katie Dolakya. And you could see around nine inch uh, scar we used to take. Cutting muscle was painful, often led to delayed recovery and need for sustained and painful physio. And as was mentioned in my uh, introduction, I started doing subvastus. MI stands for minimally invasive. And I've been doing this since the year 2006. So maybe now 16 years of this technique. No muscle is cut. So the pay, uh, recovery is early and there is less pain. So this is the older cut. Again, a diagrammatic representation. And this is the new cut. This is not new. In German literature, it was described 100 years ago. In English literature, it was described in 91, and I have been doing it since 2006. And here I have done a knee replacement through a four inch incision. And if anybody is more interested in this, a lot of information is given on my websites uh, as well. So you could go through that. Am I the only person saying this? No, a lot of people say that this has been a game changer, like adductor canal block, Subvastus knee replacements has been a game changer. Less blood loss and you can align the components well. And you can do it for all deformities. Is there any disadvantage? People say that you can't do it if you are uh, unfamiliar with the technique. It can be difficult because the access can be reduced. As I said, I have been doing it since 2006 and it's uh, more than 14,000 times that I have done this. We have also devised methods to reduce blood loss. TXA stands for tranexamic acid. It is a wonderful drug, which is very, very safe. We use other techniques like adrenaline uh, in the wound, hydrogen uh, peroxide mops, and we flex the knee post-surgery like this in around 40 degrees of flexion so that the bleeding after the surgery is much, much lesser. And we have done studies which showed that very, very few patients require a blood transfusion. So we've devised strategies to decrease the blood loss 
in patients who are undergoing knee replacements. Again, this is a published study. We've done more research on tranexamic acid. And again, this has been published in the Journal of Arthroplasty. So at present, unilateral total knee, both knees together, and the patient has a low hemoglobin blood transfusion. So another patient hurdle is conquered, no blood transfusions routinely. So here, this is a lady. You can see the pre and post-op gait. Again, a gentleman, you see the difficulty that he has in walking and how he's walking afterwards. You can see some x-rays. Even you can see the degree of disease. This lady also has a fracture. See how she's walking and some surgical photos and see how she's walking after both the knees are done. Obese patients. We can do something like this. And we have published our experience of mini subvastus in obese patients, in legs which are having knock knees. You can see a result. And we've published our results in knock knee patients also, in stiff knee patients. Also. Knees are able to flex fully after the surgery, like it is shown here. The flexion that we get is also kinematically correct. So what is the new technology? Have improved surgical technique. We talked about subvastus, which is a muscle sparing technique. And the bony improved techniques are navigation and robotics and anesthesia and pain management. All these technologies due to the improvements are likely to give us better results. But the most important technology is human technology. So specialty clinics and super specialization and the surgeon's experience makes a huge difference in the patient's results. Will knee replacements always stay? Osteoarthritis is mainly a structural deformity, so it is going to need a structural solution. We are hoping that some injection can cure this forever, but it is unlikely to be so because patients develop malalignment. That means the legs become bent. One part of the knee joint gets loaded more than the other side. And then there is a selective wear of a part of the knee and that progresses to further arthritis. So uh, replacements, according to me, are going to stay. Do complications occur? Yes, they can occur, but the incidence of complications is less than 1%. The maximal complications occur in stiff knees. Stiff meaning a knee which does not bend well. So if, your knee, if you have pain and the knee is not bending well, you should seek opinion early. Stiffer the knee, the more difficult is the operation. So knee replacement is a boon for advanced arthritis. Continual advances has caused, has made this surgery very, very predictable. I have operated on multiple family members and known patients, and I continue to treat patients as my own family members. Finally, I will end by a quotation by Mahatma Gandhi that strength does not come from winning. It is our struggles that develop our strengths. When you go through hardships and decide not to surrender, that is strength. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, doctor, for your presentation. I'm sorry, there was a connectivity issue which I was trying to resolve. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. We have a few questions that have come in. Can I? Uh, sure. uh, first question is from Mr. Ravi Gandhi. Uh, he says, doctor, I'm 60, very heavy, weighing 100 kgs. I love sports, 
what are the first physical symptoms? And I, your, your presentation had some of that. What are your first physical symptoms that you, that one is heading towards knee replacement? Uh, just don't want to knee, replace knees as I will not be able to play sport. Is thermal pain management a good option? Um, pain in the knee, he says, back and develop tennis shoulder on my right arm after I started playing badminton. Stop, stop badminton now. He's much better now, he says. This is Ravi Gandhi, who is 60. Right. Now, I hope you can see my finger. That's right. Right. So the finger also has multiple joints, right? Right. So if we consider this as an example for all the joints in our body, what we need to understand is that if our joints are flexing, that means bending fully without having any pain, right? that joint is likely to be relatively normal. Right. Especially in extremely rare conditions where a person has, you know, pain, indifference, or there are neurological issues. Right. So everybody who is here, if they are able to bend the knee, like I am kind of bending my elbow mm. without having any pain, the knee for all practical purposes is likely to be reasonably normal. Secondly, if you are not getting pain on weight bearing, by that I mean that if you go for a walk, walk for 20, 30, 40 minutes and you are not getting pain, the knee is per se normal. So you should not be thinking about what are the symptoms that will lead you to knee replacement. You should be thinking about what are the early symptoms of knee arthritis. Right. So the early symptoms are limited motion and pain on ambulation, pain on walking, pain on loading. Now, if the disease is early, thermal management, cold management, tablets, exercises, weight reduction, physiotherapy, acupuncture, acupressure, all these things will work if the x-ray does not show established arthritis. But once it is established arthritis, you will need something more. Doctor, our next question is on what you mentioned just now about uh, alternative medicine. Uh, the question is, Doctor, are alternative medicine techniques worthwhile ex to explore? Yeah, see the thing is that for, for a doctor, knee arthritic patients are different depending upon the severity of the disease that the person has. But for a common person, Pradyumna, maybe for you, or maybe for the listeners of this webinar, they do not particularly go as to how severe the disease is, but they go by hearsay. So you would think that, you know, my neighbor who had a knee pain got better by, let's say, if he says something, you know, whatever you want to say, by acupressure. I also want to do acupressure. Right. So my suggestion would be that before going for alternative therapies, we need to determine how severe the disease process is so you should initially consult an orthopedic surgeon to know how severe the disease process is. Or as I showed you the x-rays and I hope the internet was not unstable at that time, how bad the arthritis looks on a standing, simple one limb AP x-ray of the knee. If you see that two bones are touching each other, that means the cartilage, which is not being seen on the x-ray is completely disrupted. Right. You're getting it? If your bones appear like this on a standing x-ray, you do whatever therapy you want and you are going to be successful. But if your bones appear like this on an x-ray, you require something more. Am I clear? Right. Doctor, another question that we have is at what age? Says I am 61. My wife is 57. At what age should one start checking for the knees and 
how how often should one check? Hello. Yes, doctor. Can you hear me? Yeah. So, at what age should you start checking for the knees? Is it? Yeah. And how often? I mean, you don't need to check for your knees until the knees are asking you some questions. So, if you are able to walk for 30, 40 minutes, bend your knee as comfortable, maybe take part in some leisure sports and it's not giving you any trouble, stay away from docs. Okay. <laughs> stay away from doctors and whatever. Yeah, I agree. But, but, but doctor, just a thing, you know, when you, do a, when you do your regular annual checkups, you don't have, uh, uh, you do your blood work, you do your ECG and all of that. Is, is a knee check required as a, as a, you know, apart from the, the, te the telltale signs that you, that the body throws up? I would, I mean, I would take the uh, poetic license here and give this answer in a slightly different manner. There are various kinds of medical specialities and when you were showing, you know, very, very glittering uh, doctors have presented on this forum. But when you come to orthopedics, now, do you know how the word orthopedics has come about? Okay. Ortho means straight. Right. Okay. So we are all straight talking. We are straight. And peds is basically belonging to children. So orthopedics as a branch had developed to correct the bend. Come. So your question as to whether we should be doing annual checkups for orthopedics or not. So we are very, very simple people. We believe that unless your body is giving you some signals, the muscular which we deal with, orthopedic systems, all bones, all muscles and everything. So unless, unless it is giving you signals like pain, difficulty in movement, you don't really need to go to an orthopedic surgeon. I mean, I'm not talking about bony strength here. I'm not talking about DEXA scans and stuff like that. Okay? Right. Your joints are normal if they are bending fully and you have no pain. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, if there's no pain, there's no need to go to a doctor. Uh, we have one question, uh, doctor, from uh, does arthroscopy, I've got the name, the pronunciation right, on knees predispose the individual to knee replacement? This is a question from Nisha Kumar. I think that's a very, very uh, interesting question. And I actually don't know whether the answer is yes or not. You need to know why is the arthroscopy done? Firstly, you need to know what is an arthroscopy. Do we know what is an arthroscopy? Arthros means a joint. Scope is to look into it. So laparoscopy is looking inside the abdomen, arthroscopy is looking inside a joint. So all arthroscopies are not the same. You may have done an arthroscopy for a ligament injury. You may have done an arthroscopy for a meniscal injury. You may have done an arthroscopy for a so-called washout of an arthritic knee. So that procedure per se is not going to predispose you to the knee. But whatever was the reason why you got an arthroscopy done may be a precursor to knee arthritis in a way. Having said that, if an arthroscopy is done in a way where you have the arthroscope itself has caused some damage to the cartilage, it can predispose to arthritis at a later age, but this is extremely rare. Doctor, there's an interesting question that you've got, uh, which is that I am 82 and my wife is 75. I have a very active life, but I have no knee issues. My wife is 75 and she has also an active life, but at home, but she has got severe knee pain. Um, is there a... Is there, is there a is there a reason why this has happened? Is it because of uh, one's lifestyle or genetic issues? 
Right. Now, as I showed initially in my presentation, knee arthritis is more prevalent in women than in men. Secondly, if you look at it, women in general outlive men also. If you look, just look at the statistics. Now, having said that, as to why that is so, now, the female pelvis is wider than the male pelvis because females have to give childbirth. So they have a broader pelvis through. So from that wider pelvis, the legs are coming down towards the ankle. Likelihood of malalignment. That means limbs not being collinear is more common in women than in men. This is a very, very simplistic explanation, but I think this is probably true. Right. One last question we have uh, from Marjorie Fernandez. Uh, I have osteoarthritis, that is, I'm unable to bend my legs to sit in Vajrasan, but fortunately, I don't have any pain during walking or any time. There seems to be swelling around the knees more or less permanently. But I don't bother about it. My situation has worsened over the last few years. Should I continue as I'm doing at present? That is nothing. Uh, you may, but if you are getting pain on sitting at Vajrasan, Vajrasan is quite uh, fully and putting your full weight on it. You are likely to be having an early kind of disease. Knee arthritis is starting. Now, pain is a signal that the body is giving. Rather than disregarding that symptom altogether, I would suggest that get your x-rays done and show to a responsible orthopedic surgeon. These that are causing pain for a few weeks to see whether it settles by itself. Right. Thank you, doctor. Doctor, there's a question which is uh, on how can we speak to you directly, I guess, through the, uh, uh, through the hospital is what we can ask them to get in touch with? Or you could look at my website or whatever. Yeah, you could look at Dr. Uh, Shah's website, which we will put up on the, uh, along with the takeaways that we carry on, uh, on, on Monday. Those of you who have seen the presentation, those of you who have seen the very detailed presentation that Dr. Shah presented and would like to see it again. As you know, we put up the presentation, the entire, uh, uh, the entire presentation that Dr. Shah made, the video, and this entire session on our website that is seniorstoday.in on Monday. So please, please look at that. There are the takeaways written. Takeaways are written by a, a medical practitioner. And uh, so, you know, and it's not the, the entire text of the of the session. It's the takeaways, the, the salient features of the session, which will be there. Thank you very much, doctor, for this presentation and for being here, for spending quality time on a Saturday evening uh, with us. So, you know, as always, we do the Health Life uh, series. And uh, as you know, we've been doing it for two and a half years. We will be back once again with our uh, Health Life session next Saturday. In fact, in the latest issue of, it is the October issue, and I'm going to request our producer to play the October issue video. We have some of you were attending uh, the liver session by Dr. Chetan Kalal. You know, he was uh, there. Uh, uh, doctor, if you remember, he was also there at the HN Reliance Hospital until right. two years back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well known hematologist. So he's written the cover story for, uh, for seniors today, uh, this issue. And uh, along with that, we are, there is a host of other cuisine. This is. Uh, uh, the season when there's a fair, fair amount of interesting Gujarati food that is available. So there's a focus on Gujarati food and, of course, our usual content that exists on Seniors Today. As always, seniorstoday.in is free to access, so you can do that at any time you would like. Thank you very much, Dr. Shah, for taking time out. And uh, uh, we will be back again with a Health Live session next Saturday at 5 p.m. Thank you very much, Dr. Shah. Thank you.
subscribe now and press the bell icon never miss an update